Hello and welcome to Global Health TV. I'm joined now by Professor Montoni from UCL's Institute of Child Health and Great Ormond Street Hospital. Thank you, Professor, for joining us. So, Professor, what is Duchenne muscular dystrophy? So, Duchenne muscular dystrophy is the most common form of muscular dystrophy affected children. Approximately 100 children are born every year with this condition and the global population of people with Duchenne muscular dystrophy is a quarter of a million individuals worldwide. So it's a relatively large group of uh, individuals affected by the condition. Affects children initially with muscle becoming weaker with time because the muscle are not sufficiently strong to uh, uh, withstand the stress of activity, if you like. So what happens is that uh, people with Duchenne are born essentially with normal muscle, but within the first few years of life, so much damage occurs in the muscle that little by little muscle is replaced by fat and connective tissue, by scar tissue. And because of this, usually they will stop uh, to walk by the 12th birthday, and the mean age is nine years and a half. And of course, weakness continues because muscle breakdown continues to the point then uh, curvature of the spine when they are sitting, for example, is very common and they will uh, invariably require, almost invariably require scoliosis surgery to correct the uh, posture when they sit. And again, if nothing, if you leave the natural history to, to, to uh, uh, go forward, they would usually not survive in their early 20s because of respiratory complication. Heart is also affected in these people. So I feel like it's a cruel, uh, r rapidly progressive condition. Only affects boys. It's an X-link condition. What breakthrough have scientists had at the Institute in terms of targeted treatment success? So we have been working now since 2005 um, in a multidisciplinary consortium uh, to try to identify ways to genetically modify the gene, the mutant gene that children with Duchenne muscular dystrophy have. And the, the, the particular line of um, uh, in investigation we have taken is that of, instead of trying to replace the entire gene, mutant gene, that at the moment is still a major challenge because the gene is one of the largest gene we have in our body. It's very complex to put this gene back in all the muscles in the body. One, um, if like, uh, shortcut that appears to be um, effective in animal models is that of trying to modify the way this mutant gene produced the protein by antisense oligonucleotide that induce slight modification of the way the gene is spliced together at the pre-messenger RNA level so that a slightly shorter and truncated version of the protein is produced, but this remains functional while children with Duchenne usually are not able to produce any protein at all. So there is a much milder condition that is called Becker muscular dystrophy due to mutation in the same gene, and that paved the way, if you like, to think, could we make, could we trim the mutation that people with Duchenne have to become similar or identical to the type of mutation that people with much milder forms of muscular dystrophy have. And just to give an idea, Becker muscular dystrophy, most patients live the entire duration of their life. Most patients remain able to walk, although they will have difficulties in the way they walk, perhaps in, the, in adult life, but certainly a completely different severity compared to people with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So we started to develop first using, um, if you like, cellular models and also animal models with the Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Um, this, if you like, molecular patches, this antisense oligonucleotide, and we were encouraged by uh, results that we obtained uh, in a study that was published in the past, in 2009, where we assess the efficacy and safety of this intervention when these antisense were injected in a single muscle uh, of a group of children with Duchenne. That was well tolerated and delivered what we expected to deliver in terms of production of the protein. Of course, a single muscle in the body of a in young uh, man with Duchenne muscular dystrophy will have no therapeutic uh, implication. So the next challenge was the challenge that we took when we uh, uh, go went forward with the study that uh, I, we are here to discuss. And that was, would this, the same antisense, the same molecular patch, also work and will be safe if injected intravenously, repeatedly, at 
relatively high doses because that is what eventually is needed to uh, make all the muscle of the body to produce, make, to produce the defective protein. Can you describe the clinical trial? We uh, started a, a dose escalation study. We had six groups of children randomized into different groups receiving either very, very low or intermediate or moderate or higher dose. So it's six groups of children receiving these antisense. And they receive um, the antisense intravenously for 12 weeks. They had a muscle biopsy before the study entry and a muscle biopsy at the end of the study entry, together with all the safety uh, parameters that are expected in such a study. And what our findings were is that the first, that again, uh, as a doctor, is still very important, the study drug was very, very well tolerated. We didn't have any drug-related adverse event that we could uh, attribute to the drug. And in terms of the efficacy, uh, the study was, uh, in the primary outcome of the study was the question, could these children, when they start from zero protein, could they produce protein again or not in the muscle? So, in, of course, the children in the low dose, um, no protein was present, that it was expected because this was starting from a very low uh, background. But the children in the high dose, the last two high doses, in most of these children, 80% uh, of these children had this trophin production, and the best responders, if you like, in that group had nearly 20% of what we all have in terms of this trophin. And I think that the, the, I, I think that the, um, the study was not long enough to determine how much stronger these children uh, become. Don't forget that Duchenne muscular dystrophy is a condition where there is slow um, but progressive deterioration of the muscle and the drug will not replace muscle that has been already damaged and replaced by scar tissue that will protect the, the muscle that is there. So you would, would not expect people to become much stronger within a few weeks. However, the level of dystrophin these individuals have is the level of dystrophin we see in patients with much milder phenotypes, such as back and muscular dystrophy. So that is certainly quite encouraging. And the other change that we saw in the short term, if you like, in the, short, in the, in the term of the study, was that the inflammation uh, that is present in the bi muscle when we biopsy that after the second biopsy showed a significant reduction. Because of course, what happens is once there is not this protein in these children, there is a lot of muscle breakdown, the muscle breakdown generates a lot of inflammation in the muscle. So we could measure and have a statistically significant difference in the amount of inflammatory infiltrate these children had at the end of the study. So I think that is very encouraging. How do you hope patients will benefit from this treatment in the future? If you like, the, the, the study we have done is a, uh, a, a rational step now to uh, plan efficacy study. And efficacy study will need to be much longer studies where the drug is administered at least for a period of a year because that is the time frame when you would expect to see a significant difference in uh, the slope of deterioration. We know from animal studies that you need to administer this drug for many, many months. We administered the drug for three months and I think that is uh, considering that the dystrophin protein will slowly build up at the time you're giving this in, uh, infusion, I think you need a much longer period of time. So we are um, in the advanced planning stage with the company that was sponsoring the study. AVI Biopharma is an American-based company with which we work since uh, 2005 to develop this uh, uh, antisense oligonucleotide on studies that will focus on clinical efficacy as the outcome that will be necessary for registration purposes. That's the way drugs are get into the market eventually, and that is how we hope drug will then be available to all people with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. There were many different parties involved in the clinical trial, and you spoke earlier about the MDEX consortium. I was just wondering if you could talk about that in more detail. The, if you like, the development of a new uh, treatment pathway is a complicated business. And we've been fortunate to obtain initially in 2005 Department of Health funding and then in 2008 a Medical Research Council to strengthen and put together a multidisciplinary consortium that is formed 
uh, by clinicians like myself and my colleagues in Newcastle, uh, Professor Kate Bushby and uh, Professor Volker Straub, but also is uh, formed by colleagues whose uh, expertise is that of developing this antisense oligonucleotide, such as Professor uh, George Dixon and uh, Dr. Matthew Wood, and testing this um, antisense oligonucleotide in animal models to see whether how effective they are. And this is the uh, uh, contribution of um, Professor Dominic Wells and Dr. Jenny Morgan. Uh, we have a very strong collaboration with a group in Australia who also provide expertise into the design and the different chemistries on how to make this antisense oligonucleotide. And I think it's only, uh, if you like, pulling together uh, uh, different expertise and different resources uh, and critically analyzing progress and uh, being brutal uh, uh, in pushing what is working and uh, uh, putting aside what is not working that I think we have managed to uh, complete now um, in three or four years two clinical studies on time and on budget um, uh, and I think that is uh, credit to the clinical team but credit, credit to the uh, uh, rest of the consortium. Thank you Professor for joining us today on Global Health TV. Thank you.